uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your lunch. And of course, as in every conference, post-lunch session is always difficult. But I know that this session is going to be not that something that uh, is going to be some, something that you will, you will sleep. So of course, uh, I, I am really looking forward for you to all participate in this session. And please don't forget to uh, keep tweeting about the event and also share your experience on social media. It helps us a lot. Uh, on Facebook and Instagram, do hashtag uh, iDay 2023 and don't forget to tag Thai Delhi as well. And please remember to download e-handbook using the same QR code available across the venue. And if you are not a member of Thai Delhi, uh, it, and it is something that you are missing out, please do join and consider joining Thai Delhi uh, for, for, for your own learning and growth, right? So our next speaker, of course, does not need any introduction. Uh, of, you know, he is one of, the, one of the India's top content creator. Ankur Variku is one of the India's top content creator, over 9 million followers across various social media platforms. He has over 15 years of experience in the internet and technology industry. He aim through his content is to make sure all the choices you make in life come from a point of awareness and not ignorance. He has written two books, Do Epic Shit and Get Epic Shit Done, that have topped the Nielsen bestseller list in India and is Uh, inspired millions of readers to pursue their passion and potential. He's also the founder of WebVeda, a digital platform that offers courses on entrepreneurship, career management, and personal growth to over 350,000 students across the world. He's also the mentor in, in invest growth startups and focus on consumer internet uh, as, a, as a domain. Of course, these sessions are powered uh, with powered by uh, Peak15 and also Havas Media. So enjoy the session. I welcome uh, Ankur if he's here, uh, or otherwise we'll just wait for a minute. Uh, in the meantime, I, I, I think uh, let's, let's welcome him with a round of applause at least, uh, and just make sure that we are awake. <laughs> Great. I think uh, he must be joining in uh, one minute. So let me just check. All right, uh, let's welcome him again uh, with a round of applause. Uh, I was a bit early, uh, so I set the stage. I'm sorry, I started a bit early. Uh, yes, uh, we, we can have a call in mic, yes. Please enjoy the session. Check, check, one, two, yeah, perfect, sorry. How is everyone doing? Hey, the least amount of energy that could be in the room. How's everyone doing? Okay, we'll try once more and then we'll hit the seven on 10 mark. How's everyone doing? Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I am supposed to be speaking about personal branding, of which I know a, a few things, but I think you think I know a lot more than I do. So here's what we're going to do. I'll make it easy for me. I could 
tell you a lot of things that I have figured over several years of trying to create content online and creating what you would call a personal brand. Uh, but none of that will be relevant because I wouldn't know your context. So a different approach could be, why don't you start asking me some questions so that we set up the theme and the agenda, and through that, we'll be able to get to some sort of a synthesis. Does that work? Yeah? Okay, before we do that, three things that I would love to start with because that I believe is necessary for all of you to know if there is anything that you want to know about personal brand. To understand the audience, how many of you here are founders? Okay, how many are not founders? Okay, perfect. And uh, just out of curiosity, how many of you are not from Delhi? Not from Delhi? Okay, only a few of you. For how many of you, this is the first India Internet Day? All right, quite a few of you. Well, welcome, and I hope that you're having a good time. It's uh, one of my favorite and special events every year. The first thing I want to talk about is, a lot of people have this misconception, and I'm not clearing this because I'm standing here in front of me, in front of you. I have not been creating content for the last three years. I've been creating content for the last 18 years. So a lot of you may think that I'm a personal brand that's emerged onto the scenes, particularly after COVID 2020. And yes, you're right. A large part of what you've seen has happened after 2020. But I've been creating content for donkey's years. I've been maintaining a blog since 2005. I write on that blog every single day, and I've been doing that for the last 18 years. I started creating content on LinkedIn in 2012, 2013, so it's been over a decade of doing that. I started my Instagram channel and my YouTube channel both in 2017, so it's been more than five, six years, if you will. And most of the success has happened in the last three years, but most of the hard work had happened a long time back and started a long time ago. Now, that doesn't mean that you need 18 years to crack this, and you shouldn't go away feeling disheartened, but it's important to recognize that I've been at it for a really long while, and these things, as glamorous and as overnight as they seem, are rarely the case. Any success that looks and feels overnight is very rarely overnight. Number two, I spend less than half a day creating content. But it's quite likely most of you think I spend 24-7 just being online. And that is a very different mindset. I lucked out that I started focusing on content after I had almost 12 years of running startup experience. So I didn't think of content creation as content creation. I actually thought of it as a startup. And the first thing that I would do in any event, if I want to establish scale, is to find a replicable process. Something that I can replicate, something that I can repeat, something that is not subject to the whims and fancies of my mood, or something that's happening in the world that may or may not align. So what you see is very different from what happens in the background. I'm also not a one-man person anymore. I created content till 2020 as a single person with the help of, of course, a few people here and there. Today, I have a dedicated team. So don't ever trick yourself into believing, oh my god, how does he do all of this? I do not do all of this. I'm just the actor, producer, director. So I produce, I act, and I comment on my own acting. More often than not, very poor acting. But I let it be, because I'm the producer as well. And then there is this machinery of teams that help me get that raw product into a finished state that you will be consuming on any place else. But here's the biggest thing I want to leave you with before we start the questions. My reason of starting content was not what it seems today. Today, you may use several words to describe me, influencer, YouTuber, Instagrammer, all of which are OK. That's absolutely fine. You're right within your own space to say so. I am still an entrepreneur. I'm creating startups. This for me serves a very different purpose that I can talk about if you care to know. But the reason I started creating content, particularly in 2012, 2013 and on LinkedIn, was because I wanted to create an employer brand. 
that of Groupon at that point of time, and then finally Nearby, which was the last startup that I was running since 2015 till 2019. And I recognize that if we want to become an employer of choice for people that we really want to work with, we cannot offer them the best salary in the town. We can't offer them the best brand in the town. We were still growing. We can't offer them the best perks in town. We most likely can't even offer them the best quality of work because it wasn't rocket science that we were doing. So how do we still attract the kind of talent that we want to work with? And we had two options. Option one, which is a regular route that most founders would take, which is referral, job boards, job sites, try and give somebody some money, recruitment agencies, hiring agencies, blah, 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 blah. And the second one, which was the harder thing to do, but thankfully it worked for us, was can we go directly to the audience that we wish to work with? Because all these middlemen in between are only going to spoil the story, pollute the story, dilute the story, and we don't want any of that. So is it possible for us to go directly to the potential employee and speak to them about things that they care about? And here are a few things that employees care about. They certainly care about, hey, what's the company all about? What do you do? How much do you pay? What is the work culture like? So on. But they also, not surprisingly, care about who are you as a leader? What are your value systems? How do you think of running this company, owning this company, making this company, managing this company, etc., etc.? So you have no choice then but to think of yourself as creating a personal brand, creating an employer brand through your personal brand, which was the big reason that I started, and it was an immense success. How many of you know of this platform called Quora? Most of you do. Back in the days, this is 2012, 2013, again I'm talking about, Quora for some weird reason was where all the Indian techies were hanging out. They were jamming together, they were asking questions, answering questions. Quora is basically a Q&A platform. And when we wanted to hire those individuals, we were like, let's go to Quora. And let's start creating content on Quora. And I then became that ambassador and that representative to do so. So I started to spend time actively every day, 10, 15 minutes, nothing more, creating content on Quora, answering questions for people, asking questions that would provoke a conversation and an engagement. And over the next three years, I built a very strong Quora identity. At one point of time, I was amongst the top 75 followed people on Quora globally, which was a crazy wild fact for me, but it was true. And here's what happened because of that. In those three years, we had close to, I kid you not, we measured this, 13,000 applications who gave Quora as a reference, which is insane. We didn't even have any openings. These were just people applying, saying, read so much about you, heard so much about you, love what you do, is there a place? This was literally like our recruitment agency. And if we wanted, we could have built one. That's the power of what you could do as a founder if you were to invest in the personal brand and be, of course, deliberate about it. With that context, let's open it up for questions so that I can be very specific to your context. If you ask me a question, please don't make it about you. That's selfish, and I will have no choice but to dismiss you. Nobody here, and unfortunately, including me, cares about your story as much as you do. So don't ask your question about your context. Ask a question that you believe will help at least 50% of the audience here. Try to get into my mind. I have things to share, and I'd love to be as helpful as I can to almost everyone. I have a hand already there. Sir, is there a hand mic that we can rotate? OK, also as a call out, there is a very interesting session happening in the main hall around profitability which is the conversation of this time right now. So I'd encourage you to make a choice. It's written by Gautam Gandhi, and he's great with his content. So if you 
want to go there, please feel free to do so, and I'll take zero offense to it if you were to walk up and, and leave. Sir, go ahead. Good. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. So as a lot of people aspire to become the personal brand, and you were running a company nearby, you were writing the content as a CEO, and then you moved in 2020. But today, you have a lot of distractions too, right, through OTT and through other things as well. How people, how you tell people to write content consistently if they do not have resources like you have or you had? And second, how do they leverage technology in the right manner if they are a one single person team? Okay, that's Thank a great you. question and an open-ended one as well. Thank you for being thoughtful. So, the question has two parts. One, how can you be consistent with content creation? Because that's the hardest challenge. I was having lunch with a few folks and I told them, I, I, how many of you here run a YouTube channel? Okay, a few of you. Great. How many of you would want to run a YouTube channel? Okay, a few of you. How many would want to create an Instagram identity? Okay, and LinkedIn? Quite a few of you. Well, that's understandable. And that was, LinkedIn was our first choice as well. How long do you think it... So I am right now, and I'm sorry, huh? I'm going to be... I'm going to sound rather immodest multiple times, but I only use my data because that's the only thing I know. I can't be using somebody else's data. So forgive me if I come across as immodest. I'll let you know when I want you to think that I'm immodest. I have 2.1 million followers on LinkedIn. How many years do you think it took me to get to the first 100,000? The first 100,000? One year? Five years? I've been doing it for 10 years, though. So time. <laughs> it took me six years. It took me six years to get to the first 100,000. It took me two years to then move from 100,000 to 1 million. And it took me less than one and a half years to get from 1 million to another two. So when you think of consistency, it's frankly the only thing that matters. It's not the noise, it's not the competition, and the reason is because if I were to do a sample set of this very same room six years from now, I bet not even one of you would be still creating content if you still do today. It's intensely hard. It is intensely hard to show up knowing very well that this journey is long and painful. So here's my only way of dealing with it. The only way that I know that you can be motivated to do something is if you're doing something that you want to do. Simple. It's make koi wow element nahi hai, koi rocket science nahi hai. It's the first principle that I operate with in life. Nobody can motivate you to do something that you don't want to do. The only way that you will do something that you don't want to do is if there is external pressure. The only way, and now go back and think about it. There will be things that we have to do in a day that we don't want to do. It may be showing up at a job, it may be doing something as a chore, it may be doing something because we have to, and the only reason why we do that and do that consistently is because there is external pressure. That external pressure could be because of a boss, it could be because of society, it could be because of shame, it could be because of loss of fear, it could be anything, but there is something externally extrinsic to the absolute step that you're taking every day. So you have to, if you want to be a content creator or a personal brand or a founder who's creating an employer brand, you have to pick up a theme, a niche, a area, a domain that you are passionate about, that you love doing, that you would do even if there were no results attached to it. Because that's what you love. There is no explanation to it. There's no, nothing that you can do to justify it. You're just doing it. It's like, I have so many friends who are long distance runners. And like, why do you keep running for 20, 30 kilometers every day? Why do you do it? Because for me, with all due respect to anyone who's a marathoner here, I just find it super boring. I just find it super boring to just run. But there are people who do it. And the reason why they do that is because for them, that's the only thing. Sir, 
Very different. Which way? They're doing it because they love doing it. There's no marathon that they want to win. There's no goal that they want to hit. There's no target that they want to hit. No destination they want to be at. So my only answer, as much as that is a disappointing answer that rarely helpful, is please pick up something that you love doing because that's the only way you can be consistent. And that might be a journey. That might be something that you don't know of today, but find that out. You owe it to yourself to do it because if you're signing up for that long-term thing, it better be something that you do, not something that you drag your feet to every day oh my God, I have to do this as well. And then very soon, it will just fizzle out. As do most things in life that we set out to do. This year, we will be going to be Doesn't happen. Just doesn't happen because you want it. It happens because you want to do what it takes to get there. Fall in love with the process. Yeah? And remind me again. So technology. How can they leverage technology if they're so a one-person team. There are, there are. If you are a one-person team, there is zero excuse you for you to not be creating content because there are literally every tool. That, and I won't name the tool, but from writing to editing to designing to publishing, there are tools, and they needn't be even paid. If you have the willingness to play, they'll they'll only get better. But free tools that let you accomplish what you have to. For example, most of you want to create content on LinkedIn. Let me ask you this question. What is the bare minimum consistency slash frequency of content you need to have on LinkedIn per week for the algorithm to notice you? How many content pieces should you be shipping out every week for the algorithm to notice you? Okay, how many of you say one? One per week? Okay, how many of you say two? Two per week. How many of you say three? How many of you say more than three? It's two. It's just two. It is just two. And trust me, none of us in this room are busy enough to not create two pieces of content on their own, even if they are by themselves. You are, of course, looking at hashtag Ankurvariku, who's putting out 14 pieces of content a week. But you don't have to. There is a reason why we do that, and you don't have to. For at least the foreseeable future till you hit a certain point where you will then take a call on what you do need next. So please use ChatGPT. Please you use all the automated tools. We are sitting today having a conversation around AI, and it will be a tragedy if most of us walk away with not knowing which tool to use. But there are immense and more. The only tool that I used for the first seven years of my content creation was just a subtitling tool that converted my English content into an English subtitle, or it was basically speech to text, and that was it. Everything else was done by myself. Great, next question. Yes, sir. Hey, Ankur. Oh, okay, there is a mic here. Uh, Hello. Uh, hey, Ankur, my question is uh, only to you. Uh, I was watching one of your video in which you mentioned like you have separate experts for every separate platform, like LinkedIn, YouTube, and all. So according to your data, if I ask, like, do we have to be consistent on all the platforms or even a single or few platforms will work for us? Sure, that's a good question. The answer is you don't have to be consistent on all platforms. I was only on LinkedIn for seven years before I started going to some other platform because that was a platform I understood very well and I understood the pulse of it. Most of you want to be on LinkedIn for the right reasons because it will help you recruit, it will help you retain, it will help you create your personal brand in front of your customers, in front of your investors, in front of your businesses, whatnot. Please stick to that. You don't have to be anywhere else. No one says, Are LinkedIn is very big, but Instagram is not in Instagram, so I won't do business with them. Nobody says that. So get into the mind of a normal human, and very often you would find that they have zero idea. We have, we have 9.6 million people following us on social media platforms. The overlap between platforms is less than 10%. So LinkedIn doesn't know what I'm doing on Instagram. No idea. And there will be people who will come up to say, me, me to say, I love your LinkedIn content. And I was like, great. Uh, and then somebody else will say, oh, I started investing because of you. And they're like, investment ki video, kahan hai? Because like, koi idea nahi hai, YouTube exists karta hai. And I love that because then it's just literally boxes that you've created where you're just targeting a certain niche, speaking their language, getting your objective fulfilled. And that's the same thing for different, different platforms. Hamare har ek platform ke liye, Ankur Wali ko kaun hai, alag hai. Ankur Wali ko kis baare mein baat karta hai, alag hai. 
किससे बात करता है सॉरी आई शुड स्पीक इन हिंदी एज्यूमिंग एवरी प्लेटफॉर्म द पर्सन ऑफ वारिको इज डिफरेंट द टारगेट ऑडियंस ऑफ वारिको इज डिफरेंट द कॉन्टेंट इज डिफरेंट and thus the frequency and the nature of content and media type is also different every platform is different on a youtube i am a teacher on instagram i am a friend on linkedin i am a leader on twitter i am a thinker and you can imagine how these things are not the same so you modify your content for every platform and that's why you don't need to be on every platform okay uh yes you had a question and yeah go ahead hi uh Thanks for the uh, talk. Uh, it's a pretty broad question, so please choose to like sort of take it like how please, you like please. to. What is your take on how content is going to evolve and the future of content? Thanks. <laughs> Why does it matter? Just want to know. Curious. Oh, okay. Just out of curiosity. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a take. No. Uh, my take is, in fact, funny enough, I was answering this uh, yesterday for a question. My take is, content is going to go down the education route and what i mean by that is there will be a top percentile say the stanfords and the iits and the iims which are scarce very high demand very high visibility but very limited and then there will be this massive long tail of mass production which will be almost identity less it will be driven by ai it will be automated you will all control it but it's not that your persona and your personality will if use anything in that content it'll be like clinical you'll almost outsource it imagine that happening and then there'll be some very select creators who will have an obnoxious pareto effect of 99% or 99 percentile visibility and these two words will these two worlds will coexist uh, there will be there'll be no middle class in in content is my prediction a decade from now good uh, we'll go some place to the back yes ma'am why wouldn't we have you here yeah there's a mic there please so i just wanted to understand what's your take on ghost writing for content so the lot of so lot of people so there are two types of personalities right sure. so you general there are people who are generally more likable they have wider experience and they also know how to present their personality as is but there are many others who have a certain personality but find it difficult to present it in a certain manner that suits the platform sure. so they hire ghost writers and things sure. what's your take on that does that work does that not work is it you know borderline unethical or something like that <laughs> good how, how many of you thank you that's a good question how many of you would be comfortable hiring a ghost writer for your content how many of you would not be comfortable hiring a ghost writer for your content can anyone tell me why anybody yes tripti Okay, Maybe sure. Right? Fair enough. Fair enough. Anybody else? Why would you not hire a ghost writer? Tendulkar never used a runner because always said that. But Tendulkar was not a runner. Yeah. No, I get it. Got it. Perfect. ठीक है. All right. Fair enough. Yes, sir. Sure. I love that point. A ghost writer may not be able to understand me because I myself would not be able to understand myself. Yes? No, go ahead, go ahead. Your point of view? Sure. Okay. Great. Perfect. Wonderful. That's a that's a very valid point. Uh Anybody here reads books often? How many of you read books often? Autobiographies? How many of you have read autobiographies? Name a good autobiography. Sorry. Okay. 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 Open. That's a good. How many of you have read Open by Andrew Agassi? Some of you have. It's a brilliant autobiography. Huh? One of the best autobiographies out there. Andrew Agassi is a tennis player par excellence, and he's written one. Uh, what percentage of autobiographies are written by the author sorry 1 or 2% only 1 or 2% anybody else has it a guess what percentage of autobiographies are written by the author 
No, no, you can, you can sit. Yeah. What do you think is that percentage? Okay. Sure, I understand. Perfect. Uh, here is uh, here is my point of view, and it's a it's a strong point of view, and I encourage you to think about it because it's provocative. Anybody who thinks that they don't need a ghostwriter or would never work with a ghostwriter, they're only and only doing it for ego. Zero reason. If you have a driver, if you have a cook, if you have help, if you have an accountant, if you have a digital marketing individual, if you have HR. If you have a salesperson, if you have anybody who does anything that you are not capable of doing and you work with them, then it's only your ego that is preventing you from working with a ghostwriter. A ghostwriter does this shit for a living. So if you believe that you will not be able to translate what your thoughts are into somebody else's head, you're essentially doubting their capability of doing their job. Which is perfectly fine. You may have a bad ghostwriter working with you, but a ghostwriter by definition is somebody who enters your mind and ghosts write for you. The same reason why 98% of all autobiographies, including the best selling ones, whether it's a Steve Jobs or an Open or even Prince Harry's latest one, all of them have been written by ghostwriters. And you would never ever even imagine that reading it because somebody did their job well. The key is, I go back to the question that I answered. If you only care about building a personal brand, and it's important for you to do it, but you're not capable of doing it, you are either not passionate about any piece of content, or you know you're not consistent, or you know that you are flippant, or you know that you got bored, do you not have a fiduciary responsibility towards your business to hire somebody who can still make you be consistent? You will actually bring your ego in and say, Nahi, jaise main sochta hu, vaise agar nahi likha jayega, to dunia mujhe reject kar degi, dunia ko koi idea nahi hai ki tum kya soch rahe ho. Aur usse koi farak bhi nahi padta ki tum kya soch rahe ho. Dunia sirf wahi sunna chahti hai, jo wo sunna chahti hai. The world only wants to hear what they want to hear. You may just be a voice for that. So you may find yourself hearing from someone, oh my God, this was something I needed to hear today. And in your head, you'll be like, I didn't say anything new. I said something very fundamental. But it just struck them at that moment. So please, much like you would use technology, use somebody who knows their job well. And your job then is twofold. Number one, do whatever you can to think of your personality translated into a tonality. The wonderful remark that Sir said, because I don't understand myself, I don't know how I will teach anybody, but guess what? If you were forced to understand yourself, that would be such a meaningful exercise for you to do. Because you have to teach somebody else to be you. Why wouldn't you go through that exercise? It will only help you. Even if the ghostwriter sucks or would fail, you would have done something that you ought to have done many years back. So that journey will help you, which is how do you translate your personality into a tonality. Number two, it will allow you to be consistent. Because you have suddenly now passed on the responsibility of that consistency to somebody else whose job it is to be consistent. It's not your job to be consistent, it's your job to run your startup. But in the journey of that, you know that creating a personal brand will be helpful and important. Please outsource that consistency you would outsource that consistency. The same reason why you would hire a business coach if you can afford one, the same reason why you would hire a CFO if you can afford one, the same reason why you would hire a CHRO if you can afford one, the same reason you would hire a CMO or a CRO and anybody else is the same reason you would hire a ghostwriter. And it's frankly, and this is a 